Okay, Terrence, we should be good to go. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terrence Barnes, and I'm an analyst in the Montgomery County Recovery Office and a member of the Black History Month Planning Committee. On behalf of the committee, I would like to thank you for joining us for the first of three virtual events uh, for the Montgomery County Black History Month celebration. Mm -hmm. These events will be held every Wednesday in February with a live event on February 28th at the Health and Human Services Center on DeKalb and Fornance Streets. As a bit of housekeeping, we would like to ask that out of respect for all presenters and panelists that you please mute your computers so we don't hear a lot of noise in the background. We would also like to ask that you put any questions that you may have into the chat box and we've allowed a time where we will address any questions that were asked. Uh, in today's event, you will hear from panelists discussing African-Americans in the visual arts, television, and film. Before we get to the panel, however, I would like to invite our newly elected first black female coroner, Dr. Janine Darby, to provide a short welcome to the event. Thank you, Terrence. Um, good afternoon to all. I'm Dr. Janine Darby. As Terrence mentioned, I'm the Montgomery County Coroner. I am Black History. It's a pleasure to be here as we kick off Montgomery County's Black History Month program. This year's theme resonates deeply with our cultural roots, African-Americans and the arts. The arts have always been a powerful medium for self-expression, resilience, and social change. In exploring the intersection of African-Americans and the arts, we delve into the rich tapestry of creativity, innovation, and sheer brilliance that has left an unforgettable mark on the cultural landscape of our nation and the world. From the jazz beats of Harlem to the vibrant brushstrokes of artists like Jacob Lawrence and the words of poetic genius Langston Hughes. African-Americans have played a pivotal role in shaping our artistic heritage. So this month, we're shining a light on the painters, poets, musicians, actors, dancers, and visionaries who not only shaped the arts, but also challenged social norms, offering a deeper understanding of the human experience. Our focus on African-Americans in the arts invites us to appreciate the resilience of African-American artists, who use their talents to redefine narratives and break barriers in the face of historical adversity. We're taking a moment to recognize those who transform pain into poetry, struggle into song, and injustice into art that echoes through the ages. As we celebrate the past, let's acknowledge the vibrant present and the promising future. Our commitment to celebrating diversity, amplifying marginalized vo voices, and fostering inclusivity in the arts is a pledge to build a world where creativity knows no bounds and every story is heard and valued. This month, let's engage in conversations, attend performances, explore um, exhibitions, and immerse ourselves in the diverse world of African-American artistic expression. May this celebration deepen our, excuse me, one second. I'm getting dry here, sorry. Um, let this expression um, deepen our understanding of history and inspire us to champion a future where the arts continue to unite us and drive positive change. In the world's, world's um, words of Maya Angelou, we all should know that diversity makes for a rich tapestry and we must understand that all the threads of the tapestry are equal in value, no matter their color. Let's embrace this rich tapestry of African-American contributions to the arts and weave it into the collective story of humanity. So thank you and let the celebration of the Montgomery County's Black History Month 2024 program begin. Today, we're gonna to delve into the visual arts, movies, film, next week, black music and dance, and the week following, Heart, um, hair, art, and fashion. And then on February 28th, there's an in-person celebration at the Human Services Center. So thank you again for this opportunity to kickstart this um, program. So let's begin. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Darby. I would now like to welcome Minister Angela Ballard from the House of Global Ministries to provide us with an invocation. 
Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for this time, Father God, of gathering. Father God, that we will remember our heritage, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord. We just invite your presence in even now, Lord, that you will move, Father God, upon every person, Father God, that will come forth in Jesus' name, Lord. And we just thank you today, Lord, for we are all your children, oh God, and you have called us to unity, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. So we just continue to decree your word, Father, that we are all one in you, Lord, that there there is no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no slave or free, Lord. Father God, there is no male or female, Father God, that we are all one in your son, Jesus. And so we ask now, Lord, that as we remember and honor our, cult our culture, Lord, our brothers and sisters, even that have gone before us, Lord, that you would be in the midst of all that is said and done on this day, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray on today. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Uh, I would like to now introduce Catherine Cole, who will sing the Black National Anthem, mm -hmm. Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not a weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. We have come over a way that with tears had been watered. We have come treading path through the blood of the slaughter. Out from the gloomy past, Till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is past. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path, we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we 
let thee lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee shadowed beneath thy hand may we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Um, I would now like to welcome the first Black female commissioner of Montgomery County, Commissioner Jamila Winder, to provide us with some opening remarks. Commissioner. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Terrence and Catherine. Uh, that was uh, beautiful. So thank you for lending your voice to this important celebration. Gosh, I am honored to be here today. Um, I am so glad to be a part of kicking off Montgomery County's annual Black History Month program. This annual event is a series um, that the community really looks forward to every, every year. For both our employees, I see so many of our great employees on the line, as well as for our residents. I wanna especially thank our Black History Month committee for taking the time out of their day, stepping away from their work to organize this special event and for the events uh, that we'll all hopefully participate in the next several weeks. You know, as I think about Montgomery County and I think about the four decades that I've had the privilege of living here, I know that our county is deeply committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion in all aspects. Um, and as the first black woman elected to be on the board of commissioners, I feel a particular responsibility uh, towards working to ensure that we have proper representation. Black girls and boys need to see people that look like them in positions of leadership in systems that serve their community. That, represent, that representation is so, so important and it ties nicely into today's theme of film, media, and visual arts. So many of you probably don't know this about me, and uh, but I studied film when I was at Penn State University. Now, I'm not a filmmaker, so you can imagine that that dream I had when I went off to Penn State was slightly deferred. Um, but I have a deep love and appreciation for film, particularly documentary films that really capture and document the plight of Black people in this country. So today's topic is and discussion is really something that's very close to my heart. And in my spare time when I have it, um, I spend a lot of time looking for films that capture the essence and the story of Black Americans. Because if you watch documentaries like Time that talk about Khalif Browder, or films like the new adaptation of The Color Purple, which I saw uh, with some friends over the holiday season, those visual mediums can have a great impact on helping people understand um, and learn about Black heritage. They emphasize the power of representation, the importance of telling our history, and the need for action. African Americans have always created art, but for far too long, it was never celebrated, recognized, or remembered. I look forward today uh, to hearing from our, our, our panelists as we take the opportunity to celebrate the contributions of Black Americans. And I'll end with this. Um, some of you may have seen this, but my grandmom turned 104 last month. And I think about the moment that I'm in, the moment that we're all in. I stand on her shoulders, growing up in the segregated South, only being able to go to school up until eighth grade, not being able to be afforded the things that we oftentimes take for granted 
with today's generation. So as we embark on this discussion and as we participate in this great series that this team has put together, let's remember those who have come before us. Not that just those that we read about in history books or that we see on TV, but all of us have black history in our families. So let's take a moment to remember the legacy of people like my grandma and the shoulders in which we stand on. So thank you for having me today. I look forward to today's program. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Greatly appreciated. Um, I would now like to introduce uh, today's panelists. Brent Woods, who is president and owner of Inner World Communications, and Chad Smith, who is the senior director of communications and brand management at the Lincoln Financial Mural Arts Center. Um, as my first question, gentlemen, I would just like, I want to remind you that I'm, uh, once I ask a question, you I give you approximately each about four minutes to answer. Uh, as the first question, would you please take a couple minutes to introduce yourself, your background in the arts, and what inspired you to pursue your artistic passion? Um, we'll start with Mr. Woods. Uh, uh, it's on mute. You're on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, um, Terrence. I just wanted to just thank everyone uh, and I'm proud to be part of this panelist group to share about arts and culture and what we do in connecting to the community. Um, my background is in the, believe it or not, I, it, it's in the live performing arts, but there's a direct connect because what I did for Montgomery County Community College was curate the lively arts programming, which included all various types of genres in the field, including film as uh, and documentaries. I love documentaries, as Doctor, uh, as Commissioner Widener mentioned, because they do tell stories and inform you about people's lives and what they're going through. But it's in a deeper way. Uh, we connected through art linking gallery works with performances. And um, uh, I believe uh, Dr. Darby mentioned uh, Jacob Lawrence. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, dance companies that we presented back in 2007 did a whole series of choreography to Jacob Lawrence's artwork that was on the background uh, uh, at the time. So there's a link to what I get to do or what I got to do at Montgomery County Community College as senior director of arts and culture there. But in addition to that, uh, I am, um, I while I was at Montgomery County, I was there for 18 years. But prior to that, I owned an uh, Inner World Communications, which is a um, the production company that provides services to arts and cultural institution who are small and medium size. And the goal of this is not just to uh, provide production services, it's really to help document. Because what I have found when I was touring uh, in the 90s was that a lot of artists don't have a way or the capacity to do that because they're supposed, they're creating. And uh, that's, that's a critical piece of being able to maintain your history. Uh, and I'll give you an example of that. Um, what was uh, one of the projects that I worked on in the 90s was with Dayton Contemporary Dance Company. And uh, that one of their projects was to recreate African-American works and bring those works to the Kennedy Center and to the American Dance Festival. And I think the neat part for me was really good delving into the history of that because lighting and sound was a major part as well as the set design for each of these pieces. And these were works that are almost a hundred years old that was created by African-American choreographers. This was really neat to help bring to the stage. Storytelling I think comes in many different ways. And I think that that is um, a part of what I enjoy doing the most is helping to bring these stories forward. Um, and prior to working to the for the college, some of the artists I did get to work with uh, uh, were 
there was an organization that I worked with in film wise, which early on in the early nineties really started to talk about hip hop, but not in terms of just the music. It was the impact that music was having on our community. And I thought that was an amazing experience participating in, uh, I was a production coordinator for that film in looking at what music does to our community and what kind of voice it lends to community. 45 uh, so, remaining, Mr. Woods. Thank you. Um, so you ask about what was what inspired me. I think the, as I've matured, I think my maturity in looking at my collaborations are, I try to connect to artists who are really out there trying to bridge people. Because at the end of the day, we need to be coming together and uh, learning about each other's cultures. And I think that was the most, the best part of my job at the college was really uh, curating programming that really linked and brought people together through arts, through fine arts, through film, through music, through theater, through dance. Thank you very much, Mr. Woods. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes, uh, thank you so much for having me. This is uh, really exciting. Uh, so again, I'm Chad Eric Smith, and I am an award-winning actor, filmmaker, musician, uh, and the Senior Director of Communications and Brand Management uh, for Mural Arts Philadelphia, which is the nation's largest public art program. I'm also the first man and first person of color to serve in this role in the organization's nearly, well, now it's 40 year history. Uh, we're celebrating our 40 year history uh, this year. I'm also a member of the board of directors uh, for Theater Horizon in Norristown, Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, my background to my current role, very organic. I'm a storyteller through heart. I, you know, ever since I was a kid, I love telling stories, cracking jokes, doing impersonations. And, uh, you know, I did a little bit of, of acting in high school, and then I was really bitten by the acting bug in uh, college at the University of Pittsburgh. I got my degree in psychology, uh, although everyone thought I was a performing arts major because I was in uh, countless plays. I would say between 2004 and 2024, uh, I have been in close to 20 stage plays, uh, nearly two dozen uh, films. Uh, I've also produced and directed short films, music videos, PSAs, uh, TV pilots. Uh, my directorial debut was a short film called Dark Therapy, uh, in which I played a vampire with an irrational fear of blood who seeks psychiatric treatment, and his therapist <laughs> prescribed him a mumbo sauce. Uh, I'm from D.C., so I had to throw that in there. Uh, followed by my second film, Rumination, which is on Amazon Prime about a heartbroken man who travels into the past for a second chance at a failed relationship. And that was inspired by heartbreak. Uh, the way that I pitched myself to be the uh, communications director for Mural Arts Philadelphia was explaining that while I didn't have a background in communications or marketing, I did have a background in psychology and storytelling. And to me, uh, communication is understanding what resonates with people and why, and then shaping a narrative. Uh, so one of the first things I did for the organization was uh, uh, rebranded uh, thematically uh, by creating an unprecedented brand statement uh, in which I wrote that Mirror Arts Philadelphia exists to provide transformative experiences, progressive discourse, and economic stimulus to the city of Philadelphia through participatory public art that beautifies, advocacy that inspires, and educational programming and employment opportunities that empower. And so now our new slogan is beautify, inspire, and empower. And that particular uh, uh, brand statement, which they had never had before, they had a mission statement. Uh, but mission statements are more like, from my perspective, internal North Stars for the staff. Brand statements are to the public. It's like a promissory note to your customers or clientele or community about what it is, a value that you offer to whom and how. And uh, that experience of being, able to, of being able to create a log line to a movie, for example, uh, something you might see when you go to Netflix and you're looking through what you want to watch, uh, was the same skill set that I used to figure out how to synthesize an organization with 40 years of, uh, of history into a single sentence. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I was inspired by a lot of people. Uh, 
on the music front, I'm inspired by Prince, who's one of my favorite musical artists. I even got to sing on the, sing on the stage with him one time. I tell you that story, like, like 2006. I couldn't have my cell phone, but it was a good time. Uh, Jamie Foxx from acting, and Jeffrey Wright, native of Washington D.C. Uh, he's in the movie now, American Fiction. He's got his first Oscar nominations. Definitely check that out. Um, my dad is an Emmy Award winning music producer, so there was a lot of music in the house, and so I play piano um and bass guitar and so I kind of uh the reason why I don't have any hair on my head because I'm kind of wearing multiple hats like uh Mr. Potato Head and uh yeah 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 and um and I just love being able to tell stories and I love to be able to either embody a character you know whether once I played Obama in a stage play in Pittsburgh and so I had to study him uh here's the thing uh last night me and Michelle uh were talking about how we as Americans need to do better uh, so if anyone ever tells you you can't do something, uh, you tell them something that sums up the spirit of a people. Yes, you can. And, you know, just to be able to kind of like soak up characters and be able to tell stories, uh, it's just a lot of fun. And I find that it's one of the best ways to create social impact is because when you're entertaining, uh, you tend to tell them people's hearts and minds in seconds. ways that other times you can't. And so, uh, that uh, nearly sums up, not all the way, but sums up kind of what I do and why I do it. Oh, I appreciate that. That's uh, you got both have some amazing stories. It seems like you've both lived quite uh, <laughs> had some quite interesting experiences. Um, with these experiences, let me ask: uh, What do you think the major challenges or or barriers uh, are for people of color, maybe that still face? that they're still facing in the field of the visual arts, uh, television, film, what do you think that the best way to advocate for change to combat those challenges is? Uh, Mr. Woods, let's start with you. Sure, sure. Um, I think the biggest challenge that we have are the access to human and financial resources. I think the, um, and, I, I look at that, that's one thing, but I think we still need to learn about it. And we're not giving the information or the nurturing to be able to grow that kind of uh, knowledge. It's not talked about in the schools. And I think we should be doing more of that. Every, t every day I try to look at, uh, when I had students at the time at Monco talking about going into production and music production or anything like that, I always, the thing that I tried to share was Make sure you're a business. Make sure you understand how to structure yourself so that you understand how this country works. Because, you know, you still have to take care of Rome. So you got to know how Rome, op Rome operates. And those are the that's the kind of information that is not being shared. Um, I think that that is a huge barrier because you can't grow wealth if you don't understand how to create it. And uh, I, I think bottom line uh, in addition to access to human and financial resources is the knowledge to uh, look at yourself and how and see where you are going to be wealth wise in the future. I think that that's very difficult. Um, I think the next steps. Um, it, it For my ex personal experience, I think building inner world in the 80s and 90s, the biggest challenges for me was always trying to find access to capital. And it seemed that whenever, whatever I requested, I got 10% of, which was never enough to meet what I needed to do in order to be successful. And I think it was difficult because you really knew need a nice chunk to start, but we don't have that. <laughs> And so it's, uh, I, I really believe the barriers that we are still facing is access to resources. And how do you think that we overcome that challenge? Do you think that we some, I mean, create something to fund African-American projects? Yes. I think we're starting to see that on Wall Street. I, I think what's amazing when you look at CNBC today, you are seeing more black faces and more black faces that are contributing to investment banking or in in the field of investment or you know in finance. Uh, I'm gonna I speak a little bit of this. This is the, the business language isn't my language, but I do understand that in order to access funding, there needs to be some way 
uh, to your point, Terrence, uh, 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 of being having access to some type of fund to help us grow a business, whether it's something that's micro or macro. I don't know, but I do I do know that it's something that we need. Uh, I do see some of it beginning to occur. It's just where you can go to access it. Is it national? You know, is there something that's broad across that that um, that people of color have access to in order to to grow their business and to properly prepare for it? Okay. Mr. Smith. Yeah, I, you know, my answer is similar. You know, I think economic barriers for people of color um, has historically been a thing, you know, um, color pe people of color not having the same access to educational opportunities, to networking, um, to having financial backing. You know, I often tell people when I go to film festivals that I write what I can afford, uh, which can be limiting creatively. Um, but when you feel like you have more of a financial backing and support, it's helpful. I think, you know, one way to to attack that would be to encourage institutions that do have big pockets to yeah. adopt more uh, inclusive policies and funding opportunities and programming that uh, prioritizes uh, diversity and um, equitable representation. Um, you know, at Mural Arts Philadelphia, for example, we have a, a fellowship for Black artists that for the last four cohorts or so has been sponsored by TD Bank. Uh, and that's part of their kind of ready commitment. And so that allows us to put money into the pockets of, uh, of Black artists and to amplify their work. Um, I think, you know, establishing uh, mentorship programs that connect mm -hmm. uh, emerging artists uh, with established, you know, professionals, uh, you know, building supportive communities can provide, you know, valuable uh, networks and resources and platforms for visibility. Uh, you know, any company or organization, from my perspective, can figure out a creative way to bring an artist into the fold, you know, and that's why we say art ignites change, because we totally believe that when it comes to any type of intractable social issue, um, that if you have a creative person at the table, uh, they'll figure out a way to help shape the narrative, to, to bring some pizzazz, to do something. And, and by partnering with them, not only you're providing economic stimulus for them, uh, but you're also amplifying that particular artist uh, as well and showing your commitment to um, the power of art. And we obviously have to continue to educate people about why art, um, whether it's performing arts or, or you know, music or film or the fine arts is important. Um, I think one of the other challenges, and I think it's getting better, but, you know, it's just kind of like stereotyping and typecasting. Um, yes. You know, I talked about American fiction earlier with regards to Jeffrey Wright, uh, based on a book called Erasure. And uh, that kind of gets to the heart of what people expect of uh, people of color, the type of work that we do. And so uh, I think you know, n not being pigeonholed as an artist is so helpful and freeing. And uh, but also artists feeling compelled to make different types of work because they're seeing that different types of work gets amplified and, and can be amplified and can and can sell. You know, uh, you know, me making a, a a film about a vampire who's afraid of blood or a, a film about heartbreak that d deals with time travel um, and speculative fiction. These are the types of stories that I would like to see more of uh, and then not always be Marvel or comic book movies, you know, and um, and so I think it's just about pe people being more open to uh, a, a myriad of stories uh, that represent um, kind of the plethora of the diaspora and, and the various experiences that exist that can go a long way in making people think oh well maybe i should put my money behind this because i never thought to before because i didn't know the story existed because no one was telling it so it's kind of multi uh multifaceted but i do think that you know mentorship institutional support uh panel discussions like this uh that raises awareness and uh and uh and is educational uh, goes a long way you know, it's funny that you say stereotypes because, you know, with the Cat Williams thing that's been coming out and everything that's been going on. And you look at we had the Tyler Perry's and we had the 50 cents, but both of them, to me, uh, promulgate stereotypes on the opposite ends of the spectrum. You know what I mean? You either have the really religious or then you go to 50 cent and you have the real street stuff. Um, so it, it's, yeah, and it's and I always say that, like all those you know, all those examples have their place, right? Like, I, I've never been the kind of person that says we shouldn't have those stories no. exist, you know, but but they but they shouldn't be 
the end all be all right like there should be there's a spectrum you know and exactly. and, and, and while they have their place there what is about the stuff in between i was saying to my mom and dad I was like man people we don't live in the in-between as much anymore you know people can't be in the middle even from even from a political perspective it's people are really binary on one side or the other but there's there's a lot more nuance in the middle and, and the nuance and the complexity of being a human being and being human's heart is actually what is the most interesting part and i think the more specific you are uh the more universal you become i actually saw uh john singleton live speak about this and he was talking about when he made boys in the hood he wasn't making it for like a, a broad audience he was making a very specific story but by telling a very specific story it ended up uh being a, a great appeal to a lot of people so this something about the specific the universe is in the specific all uh, right uh, you know i'll tell you one of the best movies i've seen recently i think it was on netflix it was a, a 30 minute movie like somebody did a short about um somebody being locked out of their house and the day that they had just being outside that never you know just being outside the house so i i agree there's a spectrum there that we need to to start looking into um so we know that there are these challenges and you know we're trying to figure out how to advocate to get around these challenges so what advice would you give to somebody who is looking to get into the visual arts photography television film art theater as their profession they maybe want to do what you guys have done what what's the best advice that you would give to somebody like that uh, mr woods sure um definitely get out there and and intern um we i think internships i think um linking to yourself to an artist, uh, finding a pathway. I know the one thing that I tried to do while I was at the college was in our programming, always include programming that uh, for emerging artists or for youth, uh, trying to partner with like the Philadelphia Cliff Club and open up pathways for students to connect to uh, performance or to other artists. Uh, especially, you know, back to what Chad was saying about institutional connections, uh, that I think that that's it, very, very important is that institutions try to help bridge those kinds of disparities or disconnects, but also educate. I think that education is critical to, to the future in helping uh, um, make uh, giving students or people choices if they're going to go into this field because it's so vast. You know, I look at, it's, you don't have to just be in front of the camera or in on stage. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that that people can participate. So there's, a, there's opportunities uh, uh, there to really, you know, taste that. And I did try to do a lot of that uh, with middle school students and high school students and partnerships with various community centers and, uh, um, across the board, you know, to to expose what opportunities exist. Because at the end of the day, when when what I think our role is when we're in these positions of curating programming, it is it is the role to expose. It's not just to present great artists and works. It's really an exposure to bring people together to see what they can learn. And I that was one of the best part of my job was to partner with schools and different organizations like Aklama or like uh, 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 Theater Horizon, uh, all of these different artists, they're doing things in the community that's really in the roots. And I think that that's, that's how we can, that's what I would uh, suggest a person to go to is really connect to arts organizations or service organizations that are doing extraordinary things in their community. Do you think that you said that education, do you feel like somebody has to study a specific art to participate in that art if i wanted to do theater as do i have to study theater if i wanted to be you know on television do i have to go and study you know what people on television study i wish i could tell you i wish I <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> i i you know it's it's interesting because i think um it depends on the person because education is is i think subjective it depends on who you are if you're hungry, you're going to go out there and find it. 
but there are people that don't know what they want. So that's why education is an opportunity to really taste it and try different things. Um, I don't think you do because uh, there's a I, some of my classmates from high school. I went to a performing arts school. They they're they're very successful and didn't go to college. Uh, so it, it really depends on the person. But I use educate because um, if you're not sure, but you know, like you know, sometimes your heart, you, it's some, and and you're scared to go towards where your heart is telling you to go. Right? but you don't know where that's going to take you. Sometimes that's fearful. You know, people get scared of that, but that's where school can help. So educating can, can help you decide whether or not that's a field you want to go into. And also realize because to, to take that field, because I found out in college that I liked working in backstage. I thought I was going to be in front dancing. I thought I was going to be on the stage. I love operations. I love being in the background and I like thinking. So, but I found that out later. So that's why I encouraged, you know, try it, you know, educate, educate, educate. Um, I'll just tell a, a quick story about me. I had a little bit of experience that I didn't find out until way later. I liked poetry and I ended up being a spoken word artist, which I, I still believe awesome. in art. You're, you're out there doing right. it, but I would have never known if, you know, I hadn't gone and just kind of looked into some other things and tried to figure out what it was that I liked to do. But uh, Mr. Smith, I mean, what, what advice would you give? Do you think that there needs to be education? What, what's on your mind? Um, yeah, I mean, I think education can can occur in different ways. You can receive information in different ways. So you can have a formal education. You can have, go to workshops. You can just do self-study. You can go, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube. Some people call it what, YouTube college or YouTube university. Um, you know, Brent, talked about the heart and we started off with a prayer. And so it makes me think of a quote that I wanna share with everyone that I, I think for me is a premise to this question, which is by Denzel Washington, one of my favorite actors, in which he said that true desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. I'll say it again for the folks in the back. I love that. <laughs> True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. And so a lot, a lot of times when people ask me how I'm doing, I say, you know, just keeping my head above water, making a wave when I can, and just catching up to my future self. Because I truly believe that if the past is real, because we remember it, the future is as, as well. Um, but I think that, um, you know, you have to kind of embrace a lifelong learning attitude. And you can learn in so many different ways. I think um, networking is really important, you know, engaging with communities and networks related to whatever you're interested in. Uh, so network relentlessly, um, create a portfolio. It's really important to have a portfolio that you can actually send a link or show somebody what you've done and then continue to build upon it. Uh, you have to be persistent and you have to uh, have resilience and you have to be nimble because, uh, you know, it's not going to always, it's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And then you have to be proactive and seek out opportunities, you know, apply for grants, apply for residencies, uh, apply for exhibitions. Uh, I think, you know, everyone has their temperament and some people are introverts and some people are extroverts, but you can't shy away from opportunities, uh, even if they seem out of reach. Look, when I applied to be the communications director for Mirror Arts Philadelphia, I knew they had never had a man. I knew they had never had a person of color. And I knew they had, um, you know, and I knew that my background wasn't traditional. Um, but I went through five interviews to get it and uh, I didn't back down. And so, you know, uh, you got to continue to assert your presence and uh, continue to show up like uh, Jay-Z said the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, so if, if there's a financial barrier and then there's an educational barrier, I mean, there's obviously schools like Kappa, you know, I, I wanted to apply to Kappa and my mom made me go to Central instead. So, you know, I, I missed out on my creative and performing arts experience. But do you create black schools, like, uh, you know, schools that just for, you know, hey, look, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage young African-American youth. I know that there's the uh, film film in Philadelphia, the, the film arts, you know, 
I'm not sure if it's a collective, but do we start pushing out? What do you think? Do we start pushing out more educational classes? Do we start gathering people to, you know, we still have a, a couple minutes to talk about that. What, what's the best advice to give somebody to say, look, you're poor in, in the hood, but you want to go and be a musician. You know what I mean? How do we get them from in the hood into in music classes? Either one of you. Um, yeah. Well, I, I one, I think there's a couple of places. Uh, Rec Philly has an amazing program down on, um, uh, it, it's in the old gallery too. I'm sorry. I, I only know that part of Philly, but the old uh, fashion, Rec Fashion District. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. In the fashion district, uh, Rec Philly is an amazing program and it's very accessible, especially if you're somebody that's interesting in, in getting right into music. They have a program that's already structured. Um, you can go to, there's a bunch of schools that are, if you're going into the field in the, on the administrative side, there are programs in entertainment management at various universities like Drexel or um, Monco has a recording studio, recording music, producing and recording program. So there are ways that people can get access into uh, the music. I would send them definitely to one of those because then they can choose which way is the best route for, for what they want to achieve. Mr. Smith, what do you think about? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Uh, Rec Philly came to mind as well. When I first moved to Philly in January of 2020, uh, you know, two months before the pandemic hit, I was going to, I was like, I'm going to shake hands, I'm going to rub elbows. And then Dr. Fauci was like, no rubbing elbows, no shaking hands, six feet <laughs> apart. Uh, but Rec Philly was a place where I was able to get a micro grant and, uh, in fact, Mirror Arts Philadelphia is just partnered with Rec Philly for our 40th anniversary to do some uh, a series of events in their space this nice. year. Uh, but I think, um, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, I, I grew up in the Southeast DC, uh, but I went to the University of Pittsburgh at Greensburg in Western Pennsylvania. Nice. So that was a big cultural shock. Uh, I didn't get into Duke Ellington School of the Arts, um, which is where I wanted to go. And so I kind of just had the roll with the punches. And, uh, you know, I think one of the, great things that folks have now is, you know, cell phones that shoot videos in 4k and they can <laughs> create their own content and put it on their social media right. and have their friends and family help uplift and amplify it. I mean, people spend so much time on their phones. They might as well support a friend or a family or someone they know. I think folks like ourselves on this call who come across people, that's why I mentioned mentorship, uh, can help connect resources to people. Um, mm -hmm. so it's not like, um, you know, it's so it's not just a thought, but an action and a call to action to ourselves. And um, so, you know, so many different ways, to, I think, to get to the answer. Yeah. OK, so. Kind of this, this is a little bit of a broader question. So what do you believe kind of, you know, just wrapping up our panel, we're a little bit ahead of time, so we have a little bit of time to expand on this a little bit. So what do you believe is the greatest contribution that the African-American culture has made to the formulation of the modern arts, where we're at now? What do you think the greatest contribution has been, Mr. Woods? I think it's um, I think it's music and dance. And it's funny because uh, right now I'm in New York City with Philodanko as they open up their New York run at the Joyce Theater. Anybody want tickets? <laughs> if you want to experience in New York. Uh, but you look at, uh, I mentioned to you earlier about Black choreographers and uh, programming and things of that nature. Um, what's really neat is Philodenko is nurturing these up and emerging choreographers that are doing extraordinary things linking technology and to choreography into music. And I, I give you an example of that. When you look at... Um, uh, what lighting does or sound does. Philodenko, in three of their works that they're presenting here, all of those works, those three works, are cued by sound, which means the lighting is running with the sound. And these choreographers intentionally wanted to do that because it they wanted to have that experience in linking all of these different art mediums as Uh oh, Mr. Coming choreographers, as well as Philodenko presenting some great work. 
Um, but I also think um, it, it music. at somebody like uh, um, uh, Diane Reeves and her contribution to music or Dee Dee Bridgewater or all of these different artists that are doing extraordinary things in music that have come from a period where the creation of it, they're now creating also and linking technology and production and looking at how they're presenting works of the past. Uh, I think that th that's, we're making really, uh, major contributions on a global level. And it strikes me because, um, which and it strikes me in a good way. Uh, what I love about hearing the beats in music on a, from around the world, you know, when, when I was in South Africa, I was picking up beats and hearing it, but bridging not just American, but it was their culture too. And I thought that is beautiful. That is what this is all about. You, and, 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 you know, I often wonder if we realize how much we're influencing music and culture around the globe, but people are also taking advantage of that and, and pushing out their culture and their, their beautiful world at the same time. So I, I think um, it's, to me, it's amazing how Black culture has infiltrated and influenced music and dance all over the world. Yeah, uh, you know, when I think, yeah, I agree. When I think about uh, this question, I've thought about this question before. Mm -hmm. By show of hands, uh, who has been to the Smithsonian uh, Museum of African American History in, in Washington, D.C.? It's amazing, worth a whole day or two or three or four. Mm -hmm. And I often, when I walked out of that, I remember thinking, man, if this, if all the substance and content and history of this building didn't exist, what would America be? It would be unrecognizable, right? right? And that transcends, like, we were talking everything. It's the cultural fabric, like policy, politics, uh, everything, inventions. Um, but, you know, certainly I think that, you know, from blues to jazz to hip hop music, you know, that's a, a, a multi-billion dollar, you know, a global phenomenon. Uh, when I think about the Harlem Renaissance um, and kind of all that, uh, that how that changed the game and kind of created new precedents and standards across various from writing to poetry to, to you know, to dance, to singing. Um, so, I, you know, we, we got so much soul. And I think so we, we bring seasoning and sauce to uh, America <laughs> um, in a way that I think is uh, kind of loved by everybody. It transcends race, the, the, the amount of uh, value that the African-American um kind of experience and that and i think also it's the resilience too of african americans that um makes for a very kind of resilient uh, country too um but yeah i would say that like as an actor and a musician i, th I think that it's uh it's un it's, it's it's without a doubt that it has had a huge impact in ways that transcends even our own country and and, and it's felt around the world you know um you're talking about 50 or we just hit 50 years of hip hop, right? Wasn't that celebration this year? Uh, they have a documentary out now on, I mm -hmm. believe it's Netflix about Run DMC and, you know, the impact that they had with, you know, teaming up with Aerosmith and doing that, you know, mm -hmm. um, even in Jay-Z's speech when he was going back and he was talking about Fresh Prince, you know, DJ yeah. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and, right. and what they were doing, you yeah. know, just that so then from that came the Beastie Boys and you know look at the influence that they had in making hip hop into a global phenomenon. It's just, I mean, you're right. Hip, I mean, music, dance. Um, we have some wonderful artists out there. You know, I just think yeah. it's. Um, let me say to the the entire group, if you guys have any questions for the panelists, please feel free to put them in the chat. We can get to some questions. I do see one question about upcoming murals. I, you know, uh, just kind of focus on music for a little while. Uh, Tariq Trotter, uh, also known as Black Thought of the Roots, uh, he is a board member for Mural Arts, but he's also uh, going to be uh, honored at our Wall Ball, uh, which is our largest annual fundraiser. Uh, that's going to be on May 3rd. So we'll start promoting that soon. But uh, it's a big party. I, I I hosted it two years ago and I wore a salmon suit. And a salmon suit is not a suit you can wear very often. I might wear it maybe tonight, go to go to like Ruby Tuesdays and sit at the bar and make people go, what does that guy do? But, uh, yeah, it's like I, 
It's a, uh, it's the same suit in my LinkedIn picture. I can't really wear it, but it's like it's because it's too flashy. <laughs> but I hosted at Wall Ball, and so but uh, we've had and we also have a, a, a Jill Scott mural coming out soon. Uh, we have a Dick Allen mural of the Phillies coming out soon this year. Um, so really excited about those in particular. I, I see saw that was yeah. yeah. Uh, it says we are hearing things in Hollywood about how black actors don't get well deserved Grammy awards and are also lowballed with pay in comparison to white counterparts. What can be done to get our black actors recognized by the mainstream and not just the black community? Hmm. Uh, I mean, I think we, whatever we've been doing, let's keep doing it. You know, I, I don't think it's like on our timeline in a lot of ways, but uh, because, you know, the struggle has been this way for a long time. I just think that, not, you know, not to be the dead horse, but I think you have to kind of not use that as your metric. You have to kind of just continue to do excellent work, regardless of recognition coming from mm -hmm. other places. And eventually, you know, uh, people catch up and, and, and then you end up getting, uh, you know, recognition. So I think it's just the stick to itness that a person just has to continue to do, do. And I think that, you know, we can create our own awards and we create our own award shows and create our own platforms for uplifting folks. You know, I, 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 did any, I don't know if you all saw uh, the documentary on Netflix about Tyler Perry. Um, if you haven't, really good. I forget what it's, it's something, baby. If anyone yeah, know the name? It's something's boy. That's something, somebody, somebody. Yeah. Uh, but boy or something. Yeah, it's really good. And, and like, I love that he created like a studio, a multiple studios named after African American Spike Lee, who was a critic, and, you know, Denzel. And, and so, you know, if we can uh, do Brent's point about building wealth, and then using that wealth to amplify ourselves and create our own awards. And so we don't have to worry about because you think about the, the voting body of the Grammys, they look more like you know, in, in overall, more like your Taylor Swift than your Beyonce's, right? And so that often has, uh, you know, people vote a lot based on what they identify with. And so in some ways we can't use that as a the metric for our own like internal value. It has to be intrinsic, intrinsic from my, my perspective. Yeah, I, I just want to uh, piggy tail on that, what Chad mentioned, because uh, I agree. Uh, I think that it's going to take time and, but I think continuing to achieve and strive for excellence, I think that that's going to change, uh, help to change how people view and look and, and, and view how art is created. Uh, and I think that um, when, when uh, you allow that kind of change to occur, it does take time because we look at where we are now. We've been, it's 400 years later and look at where we're just getting to. Uh, so I, I, it's going to take time for us to achieve, but I think we will, because if you look at sports, it is way different than it was in 1960s. When you look at the entertainment industry on the live and stage, it's always been that we've influenced, our culture has influenced uh, American culture. Uh, when you uh, and and I and I associate dance, music, theater, film at the same time. How many people really know we had amazing films produced in the 1920s and the 1930s? Uh, so I, I I agree with Chad. I think that it's going to take time, and I think for for our continuing to produce exceptional and excellent work is is what's going to help change people to look at us in a different way. I think we were already doing that. I, I I hear this term thrown around a lot about Black Hollywood. You know, there's this Black Hollywood. You guys have been in the entertainment industry, it seems, for quite some time. So let me ask you, do you see a separation of industries? Like, is there a Black music industry and a white music industry? Are Black artists treated differently than white artists? Like, I mean, Def Jam, Jay-Z ran Def Jam forever. You know, do you think that even under him, because black artists are claiming that they didn't get the right airtime or uh, Taraji is claiming that she didn't get paid by Oprah. So, you know, mm. is there a separation of industries? What do you think? I mean, there's disparities, you know, and then people label it something, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a part of black Hollywood or white Hollywood. I'm trying to break <laughs> in either one, you know what I mean? Like, so I think it's all about who, you know, and people, everyone in, in the industry, whether you're white or black, they create their little, you know, groups and factions and work together. And so, uh, you know, I am an act, I'm an actor who happens to be black. I'm a filmmaker who happens to be black. I think I 
wouldn't necessarily would want to be pigeonholed as being just a black actor or a black filmmaker because then I think in that in it that in and of itself may restrict people from thinking they can access it you know mm-hmm. um you know I remember thinking man what would be interesting what if I did uh, if I produce a predominantly white cast film for example but I'm the producer of it would that be considered a black film or a white film you know like so it's this is really interesting. What what makes it black? Is it who's behind us behind the camera, or is who's on, on on the screen? So I guess there's different ways to think about it. But um, but I understand why people make those distinctions. You know, people talk about Atlanta being kind of like a Hollywood in and of itself, and that's very much driven by a lot of people of color, um, and by Tyler Perry in a lot of ways. Um, he, you know, he's a massive yeah, success. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts. How about you, Brent? I'm I, I'm more I, and I do I favor some of the things that Chad was saying, but I also look at it. You know, when uh, when I was curating the Lively Art series, I loved bringing people together. So I tried to do programming that challenged people's thinking, challenged their thoughts, challenged their worldview. Um, so presenting the Racism in America series, but in a series where people could talk about what they experienced, that was the goal. It wasn't just to, to teach about slavery and talk about racism. It was about where do you fit into that story? Because there were a lot of people on the other side. We may have experienced racism, but what about the people that uh, that gained from that experience and their stories. It was amazing. I'll give you an example. One lady t- uh, talked to me about her experience when she was a little girl witnessing a hanging. And I, I'm thinking as I'm talking to her, as we're talking about the series, she's telling me this story. She's telling me this, sharing her experience about that. I said, see, that's healing. And that's what that's what programming does. And I think that that's important to what it is that we should be doing. So I don't I try not to look at separation. Um, I try to look and and as Chad, I'm with you, Chad, because I'm not on either. I'm not in any of those. I prefer I would love it to see in my worldview. I'd love to see people doing a lot more together and and coming together to understand each other. Um, and I tried to do that through the, all the programming that I did at the college. You know, I'm a huge fan of Jordan Peele, and I think he has a really great model. And like when you think about a film like Get Out, uh, and I saw it in the theater like I think three times. I just really thought it was really <laughs> well written and well done. Um, and that was a story that was very specific, yes. right? Uh, but it also transcended race. You had, you know, major white stars leading it, but you also had a, a really dark skinned black man in the lead, which I think is really important too when it comes to representation. Um, you know, as a person of color, I know what it's like to not have a makeup artist know how to, you know, work with me, on, whether it's on stage or on film. Uh, but, uh, but he was able to do a story and then to do it through genre, through horror, uh, also allows for you to kind of, transcend race too you know so sitting in the theater you know it was black people and white people saying get out you know we were we came together (laughs) to help this person get out of this house because you know because more you know it's like the folks who were the the evil people in the house weren't necessarily the people sitting next to you in the theater who were white you know what i mean so um it's uh not necessarily you know (laughs) so um but so but but the fact that a story like that could unite people and it transcends race that's the power you know of, of it you know so i'm not seeing a whole lot of questions here so i have another one for you guys why do you think that art is so important for the african american culture why you know us partaking in art us ingesting art us doing art why is that so important for the african american culture I just think it's intrinsically who we are. I think it's just kind of like we, we didn't like, uh, like Richard Price say, even our heartbeat has a cool rhythm to it. You know, the way we move, the way we walk, you know, so it's, it's just really, when you go back to, you know, origins and Africa and drums, and it's just part of the culture. It's part of the tapestry uh, that makes you, uh, it's more than just a label. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's culture, you know, and that's more ethereal, but you can, you can really feel it, you know. So you have to have it. It's like it's like the water that we breathe in. Agreed. And I also think it's a way that we try to keep and maintain our access to culture or to our heritage. Uh, I think it's very important. And I think, uh, thank God we have that because that's what got us through slavery, through these wonderful stories and in music and uh, all of the dancing and moving and the different 
cultural things that we used to keep our to keep our history to keep our family uh, as much as we could Agreed. yeah it's cathar it's catharsis it's Started. therapeutic yeah and, yeah and so it really uh does i mean because the the experience of being black in america is really is a really difficult one you know we deal with a lot of trauma um, you know, James Baldwin said to be black in America is to be in a constant state of rage all the time. And how do you get rid of that rage is you got to right. do it through different ways, you know? And so, uh, that's, you know, I told you, I did a film called rumination, which is on Amazon prime, it's just 13 minutes, check it out when you can. Uh, <laughs> but that was inspired by heartbreak, you know? And so I started writing how I felt and turned it into a script. And for me, that was part of my process of getting over it. So uh, I think, uh, and, and that's essentially what Taylor Swift does with all her songs, right? They're about breakups and stuff like that. So I think there is, uh, there's value for, um, to be able to deal with things, to understand yourself, to understand other people. I think it fosters empathy. And these things are important for a, a civilization. I 100% agree. I think it's, uh... I think if it wasn't for the art, uh, we would have lost what we do know about our culture a long time ago, because right. through the arts, what we do know has been passed down, you know, through our ancestors and we continue to pass it on, continue to spread it out. So um, while we're waiting for some questions here, if anybody has questions, put them in the chat. Why don't you gentlemen uh, tell me what you guys got coming up? I know you're with Phila Dance Co. right now and you got some arts mural murals coming up. So why don't you guys let us know what you got going on? Um, yeah, I, yeah, um, I'll, well, I'll drop into the chat my film production company. I forgot to mention that uh, my film production company is Mr. Duke Productions. So I will put that website in the chat. Um, and so that was where you can learn more about some of the things that I had done in the past. Uh, New York, Philadelphia certainly is all consuming. So that takes up a lot of my, my, my time. Uh, I am working on a 40th anniversary short video that I'm uh, producing and doing the voiceover for. Um, and we, we do about 75 to 125 projects a year, uh, it's very participatory. So if you're interested in uh, expressing an idea, you can go to, go to muralarts.org and you can uh, submit an, a mural application. Um, and so that's kind of how the process often starts. Um, but otherwise I, I'm just kind of always kind of writing for myself to just creating, uh, interesting stories that I would want to, uh, produce because as an actor, that was part of the reason why I became a film producer uh, because there, it's so empowering, you know, to write and produce your own content as opposed to waiting for someone else's yes. And so as an actor, I got so accustomed to just auditioning and waiting for other people. There's no way I would have come across a hemophobic vampire unless I wrote it myself. Right. Um, and so, so there, I think it's really important for not just to wait on other opportunities, but to create them. And so, so I'm sure there's things that I have coming up, Terrence, that I haven't even thought of yet, but I'm going to do it when I do. Mr. You know, Woods, we got that. going on. I love that chat. <laughs> I'm going to do it when I can. We'll do that. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, I haven't thought about it yet, but I'm going to do it when I do. <laughs> um, some of the projects that I'm working on are um, in development. Uh, and they're more like two years down the road because I'm working with various artists who you know, how we're going to produce, what kind of funding, things like that, that we want to bring uh, to the stage, um, mostly music and storytelling about Black artists that never received any recognition for the work that they created, but we use it. Um, so I've been working with various artists to to bring that up. We're looking at 2526. I'm also um, working with various dance companies to tour their works and to package their works. And what, what does that mean, we'll package to the works? Um, a lot of companies do not have, as I mentioned in my introduction, the uh, access to being able to um, document their designs. And I don't know if people are aware that there are a lot of um, technical items that go into bringing a, a show into a theater. And the way you have to package yourself to get into the theater, that's what I want to do for small up and coming artists is to package them that way. So those are the kind of things that I'm working on uh, now with uh, multiple companies, including Philodenko. Okay. Do I have any more questions for either panelists about what they got going on? Anything that you want to know from anybody out there in the cyber audience? I'll give it a few seconds. 
know, not seeing any questions coming up. What I want to do is I want to thank everybody out there who came on to support this Black History Month event. I want to thank all of the panel. I want to thank the panelists, Mr. Chad Smith, Mr. Brent Woods, everybody, Ms. Catherine Cole, um, Commissioner Winder for stopping on, Dr. Janine Darby, uh, Ms. A Minister Angela Ballard. Thank you all very much for coming on and supporting our program. We very, very much, uh, hold on a minute, I see a question. How do we follow you? And when will you do something else with Theater Horizon? Matter of fact, if both of you gentlemen could, but I know Mr. Smith, you put your stuff in the chat. Mr. Woods, if you could put your information in the chat for anybody who might want to get in contact with you, that would be wonderful. Um, uh, we have these upcoming events next Wednesday, the Wednesday after that, uh, culminating with the live event on February 28th, which will be at the HHS building, Health and Human Services building on DeKalb and Fornance Street. So anybody out there in Cyberland, if you're able to make it to the live event, please, please come and support us. Please come on back next Wednesday for the other virtual events. We look forward to having you. Uh, if there's no other questions, I thank you all for attending. And I hope you thank have you a so wonderful much. rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.